there's a fish. I definitely need you, homie. Yes. yes. Jack Hammer in the net. Let's go. Let's go. That's why you put your faith in the Jack Hammer, baby. What's up everybody and welcome to Fishing with Gramps, presented by American Legacy Fishing Company. In this episode, we're going to cover the basics of my favorite, favorite bass bait, the chatterbait. Now, if you're brand new to bass fishing or just looking for some tips, tricks, reviews, how-tos, hey, you've come to the right spot. The chatterbait is one of the baits that's taken the bass fishing world by storm the last several years, and it quickly became my favorite bait once I started throwing it. And over the last several years, it's literally a bait I throw almost 80% of the time I'm out bass fishing. Now, if you're a beginner to bass fishing or just coming back to it after maybe several years away from the water, but you're looking for outdoors activities to do with your kids or yourself you may not have messed with the chatterbait before so this is going to be the very basics the very beginning intro to how i use it and for experienced anglers you're going to know all of this stuff but i'll be coming out with some follow-on videos with some more of the tips tricks and you know techniques that i've picked up along the way along with talking about several other types of chatterbaits and how i use them and if you're a bank angler i'm going to have a specific video just for you talking about the z-man cross eyes so stay tuned tuned in the future for those. But let's get talking about the chatterbait. Now I'm going to start with the original Z-Man chatterbait. We'll go ahead and take it out of the package. Now if you're brand new to it, a chatterbait is basically a jig with a blade attached straight to it. Now if you're brand new to fishing, what's a jig? Well, a jig is a fishing hook that has a lead head on the front of it. Now, a lot of people will compare a chatterbait to say something like the Z-Man spinnerbait, but there is a difference. This blade is directly attached to the eye of the hook, whereas on a spinner, the hook goes through and then there is a wire that comes out of the front. And the action on the spinnerbait is the blades themselves spinning to make it basically look like there are three separate little fish swimming together. But these throw off thump and vibration and a lot of flash. The chatterbait does a couple of different things. It throws off flash with this silver blade, but there are some chatterbait blades that are painted so it doesn't do as much flash. But what it does is it throws off a lot of vibration when this blade starts vibrating in the water. Now, why do they call it a chatterbait? Well, when this thing starts pulling it through the water and this blade starts rocking back and forth on this jig head, it literally gives a chattering sound. This rocks back and forth so much that it basically gives off a chatter under the water. But we'll get into a little more about that later. Let's talk about the details of each of the basic chatterbaits and where you can find them. This again is the original Z-Man chatterbait. You can find this in any Walmart for about four, four and a half dollars. It's got like a silicone skirt like you would find on any typical spinner bait. And it's, you can actually, like a lot of the spinner baits, pull this skirt off and change it because it just slips right on and off. So if you even wanted to get additional skirts, you know, you can just take it off and put it on and change out different skirts just like you could with the spinner bait. But we'll go ahead and throw that back up on there. If I turn this over, it's got a nice little built-in bait keeper, big enough hook to hang on, and a nice wide gap hook. And one of the ways that Z-Man likes to promote it, and they kind of they're kind of right, <laughs> even what they say on the back. It's the action of a crankbait, the profile of a jig, and the flash of a spinner bait. It's kind of like a combination of all. And one of the reasons why I don't throw a lot of crankbaits is because, like I said, I throw a chatterbait probably 80-85% of the time I'm out fishing. It's just that versatile. Now, if you get to look into the chatterbaits and see the various sizes, I generally fish with the 3 8 ounce. By the time you throw a trailer on it, it adds a little more, and I want something I can either let sink down to the bottom or ride towards the top and anywhere between the two. But again, you can find these about four bucks in the Walmart. Now, one of my favorite chatterbaits is Chatterbait Elite. It's got a couple of little upgrades to it. Again, 3 8 ounce. Now, this one, is a couple of bucks more. A lot of times you gotta find these online and order them. I'm gonna drop a link to all these in the description down below. So let's compare the difference between the Chatterbait and the Chatterbait Elite. The head is just a hair wider and in other colors they actually will airbrush these a little bit to uh, 
give it some tones but right now i'm just trying to cover the basics so i'm sticking with the white chatterbait because for me this is the most versatile you can fish this almost anywhere future videos we'll get into colors tons of different trailer options now this one has a wire tied skirt on it and the chatterbait elites have a lot more color combinations and offerings in the elite the hook is a little longer than the original chatterbait but it's not as wide as the original chatterbait but it's got pretty much the same keeper but the hook on this one is a little more quality it's a gamakatsu realistically if you can find either one of these i love them both equally generally i would stick with the original chatterbait because if you lose it it doesn't cost as much but they still catch tons of fish but if you need more color options, the Elite may be something that you look at. And then you have the Z-Man Chatterbait Jackhammer. This is basically the tournament edition of those Chatterbaits. It's just made of a little bit more components, but it costs quite a bit more. These, if you find them in stores, are normally around 15 bucks. If you go to American Legacy Fishing Company, using the link down below, I think they're about 13 but the tournament edition of the Jackhammer, they've done a lot of upgrades. And this is what a lot of the tournament guys throw. I generally throw these in my tournaments. The blade is just a little bit better. It starts up faster as soon as it hits the water. It's got a detailed head with eyes on it, painted on the top. You see the skirt and this one. They do make these in pure white. I have one back here. But if I get one that has more of a, a, a shad color where it's got a little bit of darker on the top and then the white on the bottom, kind of the way that a thread fin shad looks in the water. Then I try to kind of match the hatch of what's of where I'm fishing. It has a double style wire hook keeper and again, a quality hook on it. And you can see it even, it comes with a little protector there to keep you from stabbing your fingers. Hooks are so sharp. This one uses a snap on it instead of the other little tie on that's on the original chatterbait. But do I recommend these for a beginner, especially bank anglers? Probably not. It's a good quality bait. It's really good. But for the money, stick with the original chatterbait. Now, like I said, there's several other different styles of chatterbaits. They also make, in the $8, eight $9 range, they came out with this Project Z. And as you can see, it's got like a, it's got a detailed swim head on it. And then this one's got is like the silicone skirts like the original jackhammer had. It's got a double style hook keeper and a good quality hook there too. But I don't really mess with these. I mean, it's it's a nice looking bait. But for me, the original chatterbait or the elite will do just fine. Again, depending on colors. And we'll get a whole lot more into colors in future videos. So that's kind of a basic look at some of the different styles that you'll see generally in stores. The original chatterbait the Elite Chatterbait, and the Jackhammer. Of course, you hear everybody talk about Jackhammer because that's what most people throw in tournaments. If you're just bank fishing or, or out fishing for fun, trust me. I fish for practice for tournaments just as much as I do tournaments, and I throw the original in the Elite and catch the exact same fish. It might be a confidence thing for me during a tournament to throw the Jackhammer, but is it really necessary? I don't think so. But if you're brand new to fishing, you don't care about all that. You just want to learn the basics with these, how to catch some fish. So I'm just gonna treat both of these the same, the original Chatterbait and the Elite, and we'll talk about how I, and again, start with the white Chatterbait. You could throw this anytime, anywhere, catch fish. Let's talk about some of the different trailers we put on. Now first I'm gonna start with what you could find the most often, and that's probably just running to, you know, make it for a quick trip to the local walls, Mark. Zoom super fluke. All right, so first what I'm gonna do when I go to feed this on, I am going to hold the nose of the bait against the bottom of the skirt, and then figure out where that hook is gonna come out and then I'm gonna hold that in my hand here. And then I'll turn it over. And I want the top of the fluke, the flat side, to run along the bait so that it comes out you know, in line with the head of the chatterbait. So now that I know that I, how far I wanna feed it on, I'm just gonna start running it through straight on. And I am going to keep this, I've made a mental note where I'm gonna be coming out, but what I wanna do is I wanna keep the hook running along say the spine of this fluke so i want it to stay on the very just under the surface along the top part of this bait so i'm gonna start feeding it on and right about there is where i want my hook to come out and then i'm gonna feed it around push it up over that bait keeper give it a little wiggle jiggle and then i'm gonna pinch in so that that bait keeper grabs it and boom 
just like that so when this thing comes through the water it's crazy but you have a nice big profile bait you have a double tail that's just going to have a lot of action in the water drives fish nuts now one of the other baits that you'll find often in the wally mart are baits like this rage menace little twin tail kind of grub like style bait i've seen z-man the people who make the chatter baits they have one called the goat you might find that there you might find you know any of the the creature style baits like this that just have the little twin tail. So when you rig this on, you can either rig it this way or this way. So when the bait comes through the water, you might have the twin tails like this. So it kind of looks like a fish tail going through the water when they flap and catch the water. Or you can turn it this way so that they kick like this. So it's a matter of either going sideways like this or up and down going like this. So that's two different ways you can rig the same bait. Sometimes it's a matter of just playing with it to see what the fish like that day. Now another bait that's most common like at Walmart are these little swim baits that's got the little paddle tail to them. Might see Kytex, the Guggen bait, Saucy Swimmer, uh, Rage has got the, can't remember what they call their paddle tail, but something with a little paddle tail like this. But you don't want to rig this on like you would a normal swim bait because the paddle tail itself is meant to be, it's meant to generate action by the water coming through the tail and then making that tail really toss and turn. That is actually counterproductive to the blade that's on the chatterbait because the blade is disrupting the water and it actually makes the tail work in a way that will drive the bait back up through the water column and you don't want that. You want to keep it where it's at and you're controlling the speed or the height of your rod tip di dictates where it's going to ride in the water column. So what a lot of people will do is they'll rig it upside down because then it's got a little more subtle action but it's not catching as much water. What I prefer to do is take a pair of scissors and right where the paddle meets the tail, I just nip it off. And what that does is it leaves a little bitty fish tail just like that so that when you rig it on, push it up, squeeze it on, then, I mean, you can see the action the tail has it's by itself just like that. So, but when the blade is working and it's throwing this jig head back and forth, it drives that little tail. It just, it just goes like crazy. Now, this is my, one of my favorite late summer presentations with a small swim bait like this because it represents those small shad that just spawned a couple of months ago and they're starting to grow. They're still really small but the bait fish really load up on these. So sometimes this time of the year, a big fluke style bait like this might be too big. You want something a little bit smaller in the water coming through. And this little swim bait does a great job of representing that little you know, shad spawn that's starting to grow. So again, those are the basic things that you can find normally locally at your Wally Mart. These next baits, you might have to move up in more of a sporting goods store, or in my case, go to American Legacy Fishing Company and get you what I consider the best chatterbait trailer there is. The Gary Yamamoto Zeko. I probably have way too many colored types and choices of these, but again, we'll get into a lot of that in future videos. For today, we're gonna keep it simple, and I'll go through like three different little colors that you can get. So here is the white Zeko. And then here is a white with a little translucent silver on the top. Again, I really like that because it really makes it look like a shad. But I mean, just look at the action of those tails. I'm not really even moving. But these things are so amazing in the water on a chatterbait. I will go ahead and feed one on. But these Zakos have caught so many fish for me this year. But I mean, as you can see, it just looks like a little fish. I mean, it's gorgeous in the water. Another color I really like, if the water's a little bit stained and you kind of need some contrast, is this green pumpkin in white. So you can take this one, and this is probably one of the most versatile. You can take this and throw it on a green pumpkin chatterbait, and it's still in, in super clear water and still make it look like a shad because of that white on the bottom. It's not overbearing like a pure white chatter might be in super clear water, and it gives it just enough so when this thing is twisting in the water, they're catching that green pumpkin in white, you know, kind of revolving and it makes it look like the lateral line of another fish and it just drives bass insane. But again, Yamamoto's Echo, like I said, I'll link all these down below. Now, if you're a Six Sense fan and you get their bags and stuff, one of my other favorite baits is the Six Sense Flush. They've got so many different color choices, so many options, but these things swim with a chatterbait. Very, very good. Well, this bait right here, 
is a Chatterbait Elite with the six cents flush in a bluegill color. And this is the actual bait that I used on the last day of a tournament I was fishing to qualify that qualified me for the KBF National Championships here in 2021. I was fishing in a lake. It's not, it didn't really have any shad. So the, the main forge the bass were eating were bluegill. And I was throwing this around points of islands. And uh, on more than one occasion, it caught me big fish in this body of water I was fishing. Yeah, it might be a keeper. Yep. That's a keeper. You go ahead and hop on in my net right here for me, homie. That's a better fish. That's a whole lot better fish. Nice little chunker. And sometimes you gotta really match up with what the water has, you know, to catch them, especially in heavily pressured lakes. But we'll get into more different color types and trailers and whatnot in a future video. So those are some of the different trailers I like to use. Again, the chatterbait is a great, you can use it in place of a spinnerbait, a crankbait, and even a jig dragging it along the bottom of the water. Super muddy water, you can throw black and blue. Early in the spring when those crawfish are red, you can throw a red. We'll do separate future individual videos on those. All right, now that we've covered the basics for the chatterbaits and some of my favorite trailers to start with, let's talk about the gear I use and then how we tie it on. Now let's talk about line that I use for throwing a chatterbait. For me personally, 15 pound Seaguar and Invisix fluorocarbon. That's my go-to for chatterbaits up and down the line. Being a kayak tournament angler, I have invested a little more in higher end gear for chatterbait. I've got the Dobbins Champion chatterbait rod. The bait caster I use is a Daiwa Zillion Reel, six gear ratio, but that's way overkill for a beginning angler. So let's get back to the basics. If you've been following my beginning bass fishing series, you might recognize this reel because we just did a pond video on it. Basic Abu Garcia Black Max, $39 at Walmart. Simple chatterbait with the fluke on it, still there from that video. This is 12 pound strand, easy cast monofilament. Now when you're fishing a chatterbait with something like this, you're gonna have the bend and flex of the spinning rod that's a little bit softer than normal. So when you set the hook, you're gonna wanna sweep the rod pretty well. Why? Because you're gonna have extra bend of this medium rod and monofilament tends to stretch just a little bit more. So if you get into really loving the chatterbait and pretty much tired of throwing everything else and you wanna have a dedicated setup to it, I would recommend probably going to 15 pound fluorocarbon just so you get a little bit less stretch. But you don't have to if you don't want to, this will still catch fish. If you've been fishing with the spinning rod for a while and are already a little more advanced in your techniques and haven't made the jump to bait casters yet, you might be fishing with braid, which is great. Less stretch. Moderate action rod with the braid makes for a great combination throwing those chatterbait. You don't have to sweep quite as hard. The rod will give you plenty of action to play the fish, but the braid will give you plenty of hook penetration when you go to set that hook. Now my personal preference if I was using a spinning rod, since you still have the moderate action of the spinning rod, this 15 pound fluorocarbon. You get the good action of the rod, but you get again a, a line with very little stretch to really drive that hook set home. If you're still primarily using spinning gear and you have a rod with fluorocarbon already on it, to me, that's my favorite chatterbait combo if you're using spinning rod. And on to bait casters, you'll get some varying opinions on this from different folks because everybody has their own way of doing it. There's no wrong way if you're catching fish. Myself, I prefer a medium action rod with a six gear ratio bait casting reel like this Kevin Van Dam. This is the Guggen Squad Reaction Rod. Has caught me a ton of fish playing around while I was testing this rod. 
it's got a really good action. Now some will say seven foot medium heavy action rod. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that either, catches fish. I tend to like something that's got a little more give in the rod itself because if they get it parts, a little bit better action on the chatterbait. Again, 12 to 15 pound Seaguar Invisix fluorocarbon works like a champ for me. I like the six gear ratio because to me it works the chatterbait. People say, well, just get a super fast one and then reel slower. I've heard that before, but a lot of people don't realize when you miss a big fish and your adrenaline's through the roof, then all of a sudden you're reeling super fast and you're not working the bait at the speed it's supposed to be going. So again, I tend to try to match the action of the bait to the reel that I'm using. If you've only got one rod and one reel, yeah, you have to speed up and slow down. It makes more sense to maybe have a faster gear ratio. But if you're working on setting up a specific chatterbait combo, like I was talking about here, six gear ratio, moderate action rod. All right, so let's talk about knots. If you're using one of your spinning combos with monofilament on it or braid on your spinning rod or bait caster, tie a simple polymer knot. I'll link a video up to that up here. If you are throwing fluorocarbon, I don't recommend the polymer knot. And I'm not the only one who doesn't recommend the polymer knot for fluorocarbon. You may have been tying it on there a million times. I've never had a problem. Okay, that's understandable, but I'm not willing to risk the biggest fish of my life to a knot that can potentially cut into itself. And it's not just me saying that. There's tons of videos of pros saying the same thing because they fish for a living. I don't, you probably don't, but they do. And they tie other knots than polymer knot because if you don't tie it perfectly, it can cut into itself and lose your bait. So all that being said, let's talk about the knot that I tie, the San Diego Jam Knot. It's a very fast, a very easy knot to tie, and it's very easy to learn. All right, so what you do is you feed your line through the eye one time with your off hand, and you're gonna pinch the main line with one hand, and in the other hand, you're gonna grab your tag in. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna loop the tag in line over that finger, and then pinch it so that you have both the main line and now that tag end in your hand. And then what you're gonna do from here is take this tag in and wrap it around both of those line six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then from there I will just let go and I will take my index finger and point it up holding this loop and then I'm grabbing the bait down here. Now what I'm doing here with the tag end is I am going to run it through the loop at the bottom of those wraps. And once I do that, I'm gonna pull it out. And I've got it again in my hand. And I'm gonna take this tag in and I'm gonna poke it through the loop at the bottom of my finger, the same direction that the main line is going. And then I'm just gonna pull it up. And now I'm gonna let all of this go. And I have both the tag end and the main line in this hand. And from here, I'm just gonna start slowly tighten it down just a little bit, and then I'm gonna wet it. I'm gonna pull it a little tighter, and then I'm gonna pull that main line down so that it pulls against, and then I will grab both, pull it tight, and then I'll grab the main line one more time, pull it super tight, then I'm gonna grab the main line, get it out of the way, and then I will just clip off our tag end. Once I've clipped the tag end off, I'm gonna pull it tight one more time. I'll have a little bit there at the tip, that's fine. That's just in case it slips out. But that is our San Diego Jam Knot. It has not failed me once and has always been solid. Now when you actually go to fish this, you can make long casts, reel it in like you would most any other bait, just, you know, reeling, throwing it out, pulling along grass, you know, grass lines and just reeling it back in. What I love to do is I will throw it out and then I will, as I'm reeling it in, I will twitch my rod tips. And what that does is it makes that bait really dodge and dip around. And sometimes it really, if a bass is following it, just that little twitch, all of a sudden change of moment, they're thinking it's going to get away and they're going to come up and grab it. Now, are chatterbaits perfect? Nope. Will you lose fish on them? Yeah, it happens to everybody. 
sometimes you might come past the fish and as this bait's coming by they're going to grab it kind of from the front and when you go to set the hook they may feel that and they'll open their mouth and blow it back out when the fish comes up and grabs it from behind like they do normally you'll be able to get a good hook set in to them now when we talked about the actions of the rod one of the reasons why i like a little softer softer action so to speak is the you don't want to pull the bait away from the bass now what normally happens is a fish will come up and get it and then what they'll do is they'll exhale the water out of their gills and then they'll pull it back into their mouth a little bit more as they go to crush the bait because that's what they do is they crush their their prey so to speak they do it with crawfish they do it with you know with other little fish that they're eating but a lot of times that initial hit that you might feel is them actually sucking the bait in so at that point they may not have you know exhaled that that water out of their gills yet and moved it back to really crush it so sometimes almost if you feel it too fast you'll swing to set the hook and they'll just open their mouth and let you pull it out sometimes they'll get it in their mouth and you may start reeling and pulling against on them and what you've actually done is you don't have that hook in their mouth it's just sitting kind of like that hook is in my hand like this and if you go to pull and set the hook you might catch you know something on it that you know you'll get enough hook into them but until they really move it back in there to crush it um, you don't have that hook in them yet more often than not if we feel it too fast and set the hook too fast we could pull that hook away from getting the hook into them it's a matter of when they get it back a little more and then you go to set the hook and it, then it drives it somewhere in their mouth. You'll catch a corner of their mouth. You'll catch the roof of their mouth in the back. I pointed at my chin. You'll catch, you'll catch the top of their mouth a lot and get that hook into them somewhere. So on smaller fish, big fish, sometimes it's a challenge because they have so much open room in their mouth. When they go to blow that back out, it'll come out free. Sometimes you'll, you might be setting the hook as it's coming and you'll, you'll turn the bait and it'll catch their, you know, it'll catch them like this as it's coming out, but you just never know. Now again, this video is very basics of a chatterbait, and we're more focused on this bait imitating a fish. The chatterbait can also be fished with crawbaits, and we'll get into that in another video. We go into a lot more depth and talk about a whole bunch of different trailers if you're fishing the chatterbait as more of a crawl style bait. But again, this is just basics, getting people started. Drop me a comment down below. You've been fishing with the chatterbait. What do you think? Is it one of your favorites like it is mine? I've been loving it. Yeah, stay tuned for part two when we start talking about different colors and different trailers like this Berkeley Chigger Crawl. Until next time, get outside when you can and make some memories one cast at a time.